I'm Daryl Monroe from Beyond the Numbers. And today we're talking about one of the mental models that we use with leaders to help them develop uh, tools and support mechanisms, if you like, to get better outcomes. And one of the models that I want to introduce you to today is we call our collaborative leader. Now, this is based on the research and the, the, for example, uh, the significant amount of research out there, but one, one uh, LinkedIn recently did some research and what they found is when you're going forward into 2020, these are the key skills that will differentiate leaders and their successes out there. And that is the top five skills is creativity, persuasion, or we like to say influencing, collaborative, be adaptable and emotional intelligence. Now, you know that through, if you've watched a number of our videos, that we're quite often bringing up these points uh, because in the programs that we develop to support our clients is very much based on the latest research so that we can get the right outcomes for leaders. And so this model will be an example of how we round out thinking with leaders. So. The collaborative leader, I guess that most of us would immediately think of what is a collaborative leader doing? And, and they're, they're one who don't, they don't stand out as it's do it my way or the highway. It's more about how can I interact with others that will set up my team for success and my peers, et cetera, et cetera, to get the best outcome for the business, which is ultimately why they're employed in a leadership role in the first place. So what we need to do is if we're going to think as a collaborative leader, we need to think about the people around us and how we in, uh, interact with them across functional groups, etc., to get the right outcomes. And so a, a collaborative leader, for example, they have peer suppliers generally in any process. So somebody is giving them something or doing something that they then take and then do something else with so they can then deliver it to their ultimate customer or their peer customer. And so... That's one way of thinking. So there's one layer. The other way is you can think about the collaborative leader is trying to set up an environment where their team members can excel. And we do that by interacting with them in a specific way. And questions rather than telling is, is one of the enablers, if you like. And then you've got to think about, well, do I, does a collaborative leader need to develop strong, robust relationships with senior decision makers? Well, of course, because if you've got good ideas and you want to float those ideas, you need someone that's willing to listen to them and give them a good hearing and get them across the line so the business can benefit. So they're just fundamentally just going vertically um, or, or across. But to fully round out that 360 view of what a collaborative leader can do, let's also add in there are like some external influences. And so these are people who are maybe outside your immediate sphere of, uh, of the people you work with, but heavily influence on what goes on in the organization, either internally or even as a result with the customers. They could be senior sales managers that are interacting with your customer base on a regular, regular time frames. The other are the in other internal decision makers other than the senior decision makers. And so these are people at the end of the day, maybe financial controllers and others that could be contracts, administration, people that will, will either create indirectly create roadblocks for you and your team or become enablers for you and your team to get the right outcomes. So they're worth considering too from a collaborative leader's point of view. And then we have things like our external suppliers. If we've got good arrangements with our external suppliers, we can make sure we get what we require in a timely manner. So we build the relationships with them as well. Now obviously that's managed through contract administration and our policies and procedures, but hey, picking up the phone and talking to your external suppliers is a good start. And then of course we have other considerations like am I preparing and developing members of my team in terms of being my backups when I'm uh, off shift or away from work, etc. And, and also preparing them for future roles. So a collaborative leader is actually looking at a big picture compared to traditional leaders where are focused on goal orientation or task uh, 
etc. This is a, a leader that's actually looking quite in an integrated manner about how cross-functional groups get better results by actually working together and understanding each other's needs, setting up the right service type uh, contracts, etc. internally so that people are very clear, they know where the accountability lines are, and collectively you get much better outcomes. So we use this in the context of the development that we do with leaders, and this helps them think about the bigger world in which they interact with internally within organisations. So I hope this is uh, a chance for you to reflect on this, and going into 2020, think about how being the collaborative leader in your organisation can be quite an influencing uh, experience in its own. I look forward to catching up with you in our future videos, and we'll see you later in the year.